Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. Tonight is the night we do a maiden slew on the Ascar 103 APO refractor. Now, we have a few accessories to test as well. We got the field flattener, the 0.8 times reducer, and also the 0.6 times reducer, but tonight is all about the one times field flattener. So that means I'll be making a series of videos on the Ascar 103. I'll also be dropping them into a playlist for you. And if you missed my unboxing video, make sure you check that out. But before we get into all that, let's go talk about some specs. The Ascar 103 APO refractor made by Sharp Star Optics features a index 360 degree rotator, two finder bases, a 160 millimeter handle, which you can also install a guide scope onto, a generous 198 millimeter dew shield, complete with a locking screw, a 3.3 inch rack and pinion focuser to ensure smooth movement. The focuser also has 100 millimeters of focus travel and a 300 millimeter Victon style dovetail plate. This telescope sports an aperture of 103 millimeters and a native focal length of 700.4 millimeters with a focal ratio of f6.8. The objective lens is a triplet airspace design that includes one extra low dispersion glass, which Sharpstar Optics promises to have excellent correctional properties. The OTA weight comes in at 4.75 kilograms, or just about 12 pounds. It also has two inch to one and a quarter inch visual adapters and also has a felt-lined pair of tube rings that will keep your telescope finish scratch-free from years to come. And last but not least is a metal lens cap for that large objective. What? Yeah, you guys know I go ham on this stuff sometimes, so um, let's just go choose our target. So I think the target for the evening is going to be IC410, or the Tadpole Nebula. Now the Tadpole Nebula lies in the constellation of Auriga. Is it Auriga or is it Auriga? I think it's, I wanna say it's Auriga, but I'm, I'm totally not sure. And this was one of the first emission nebulas that I actually captured way back when. So I know this very well. I know this deep sky object very well. I mean, I don't know it personally, but you know, we're good, you know, we're acquaintances. You know, it's, it's cash. <laughs> the Tadpole Nebula is an emission nebula located 12,400 light years away from Earth. And I think this is actually gonna be a really good target to get because there are some dark nebula floaty bits in here, is what I call them. And you can see them right here. And we're going to try and resolve all this stringy stuff in here. And I could do it with my Z73, but I did kind of have a hard time with it. And with my Ascar 103 and my 294 in bin 2 mode or 11 megapixel mode, my sampling is going to be around 1.36 arc second per pixel. So I'm going to be right there in the center that Goldilocks zone that we like so much. So I should be getting some really sharp detail, especially with the four inch aperture, right? All right, guys, let's talk a little bit about back focus. So according to Sharp Star, back focus is attained at about 55 millimeters from the flattener. And that goes uh, for the reducers as well. So 55 millimeters for both. So in theory, I should just be able to bolt my stock imaging train that I use all the time to the back of the flattener and it's just gonna work like magic. I wasn't sure that I was going to use an electronic focuser. I think at this moment in time, I'm not going to just because of the way the case is designed and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But I ended up printing a Batnoff mask so I'll be using one of these for focusing. And you know what? It's not a bad thing because I really like focusing with Batnoff mass. I don't know what it is. It's just something I like to do. So, okay, we got our target, guys. 
let's get out there because we weren't even supposed to have tonight. This is one day after the unboxing video and I saw on clear outside that it was going to be like 100% covered. And then Astrospheric said that we have this kind of pocket of clear skies and I'm gonna trust Astrospheric and get out there. And I think we're gonna have about two hours. So let's get on out there. All right, guys, look at this sky that we weren't supposed to have. And we beat the clouds actually. I, they haven't come yet. If you look over my shoulder, there they are. They're probably about a couple hours away. So I think by 10 o'clock, it's just gonna swallow us up. But we're out collecting data a day later than when we got this scope. Can you believe it? I mean, I think we beat the OTA, new OTA curse, right? And guys, setup was actually amazing. Check it out. It's refracting right now. Hold on, let me adjust this so you guys can see it. Ascar, Ascaring up. There's a couple things about it though. So, focus was really easy to find, but I noticed that when I tighten the screw down to lock the focus in place, my focus moved a little bit. So you really wanna be careful of that. One other thing too that I liked was on the dew shield. It looks like Ascar purposely fit a spot where you would put a dew heater. And if you put a dew heater around like the bottom of where the lens is or the lens uh, or the dew shield, it fits perfectly around where the lens would be. So good job, Ascar, for designing that one. Um, it, it's working amazing right now. It's really cold, but uh, I am dew free right now. So definitely liking this scope for sure. I'm actually getting data back on my target and it's looking really good. You know, um, stars are nice and sharp. I didn't have to worry about collimation for once. Like this doesn't happen very often to me. I mean, it's it's worth it to collimate. You know, it's worth it to shoot with Hyperstar. But sometimes it's nice to just set it and forget it, right? And that's exactly what I did tonight. So, but those are a few things that you want to keep in mind as you're setting up. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna keep enjoying the night. Jeez, guys, it is beautiful out right now. Look at this. I mean, we see some of the fog coming in right now, but I mean, to have a night like this when we're not supposed to is such a gift. You know what I mean? Especially getting a new scope. And usually when that happens, you don't see clear skies for months. You know what I mean? I'm glad that this wasn't the case. Hope we have more like nights like this where it's supposed to be cloudy, but it's not. I mean, just even a few hours of imaging just is really good for the soul. You know what I'm saying? All right, because I'm almost positive that y'all aren't gonna wanna wait to see what the star performance is like. <laughs> after I stack this in my reveal. So I'm just gonna show it to you now. I'm taking HA frames right now and let's take a look at it, shall we? All right, so here's the Tadpole Nebula and here's the stars in the middle. And this is with the 294. So I'm shooting with crop sensor camera. So it's actually looking pretty good in the center. Let's see what it looks like in the corner, shall we? All right, here it is in the far corner. I don't see any flaring, nothing weird here. This is the top left. Let's scroll down here. It's kind of midpoint, right? And then bottom left-hand corner right now. 
looking good. All right, let's just scroll over here, see if we see any weirdness. No real weirdness. I don't see any ghosting or flaring. This is the bottom right hand corner. And then let's scroll up. Wow, I mean, this is amazing. This flattener is definitely doing its job. There's my amp glow. See, you can tell I'm like zoomed in, right? And then here's the top right hand corner. So, so far so good. Haven't seen any weirdness in the stars. Uh, they're not oblong or oddly shaped. No flaring. This flattener and this scope is definitely keeping my stars super round. And check out my resolution too, right? I'm at maximum sampling mode at bin two, making sure I'm taking advantage of, you know, the focal length on my refractor. And it looks like, especially here, as I'm zooming in, to the tadpole nebula know the dark nebula that's actually in the tadpole nebula it looks like i'm getting a lot of fine detail even though i'm shooting at 11 megapixels but i think it's just because my sampling is pretty much right where it needs to be wow this is really exciting well guys check it out it is about that time I'm about to get covered and the clouds are here so I'm gonna pack it in I got one hour in HA and I think it, almost an hour in 03 I was just gonna get HA tonight but I decided to go for a little bit of 03 just so I can turn this photo color so I'll probably do an HOO on this and see what we get so guys I guess this is good night and it was the first night for my As Asgar 103. <laughs> yeah, I'm that cold that I don't know what it's called anymore. <laughs> All right, good night. And we're back. But before we get into the data that we collected, let's talk about this case here for the Asgar 103. I really like it actually. It's Got this cool graphic on the side of it. Uh, really nice zippers for sure. Uh, it's got the shoulder strap. That's Taco. <laughs> you wanna go get him? All right, let's, let's see what he's doing, all right? All right, here's a little scamp. And he's doing that thing again. <laughs> Come here. Okay, I guess you don't want to say hi to everybody. As I was saying, I really like this case. It's got the neat design on it, it has the shoulder strap, has the uh, nice zippers, heavy duty zippers. But the best thing I like about it is this. It has got some very dense foam, okay? This is really protective, especially for as large as that scope is. We need something like this to carry it in. The only thing I wish Sharpstar would have done was made this a little bit longer and a little bit wider. That way we could either mod the case to fit a reducer or a flattener on there at the same time, or get a EAF on it as well, because I don't know about you, Sharp Star, but a lot of a lot of a lot of Astro imagers like shooting with electronic focusers. Even if Sharp Star like offered, I don't know, maybe a larger case for purchase, I would definitely purchase it because this case is really cool. Alrighty, well let's get into the data. All right guys, the moment you've been waiting for. 
my stacked data. So let's get into it. Here is my HA data right here. And as you can see, I actually got quite a bit of signal. This is only one hour in HA. So again, let's take a look at the stars just to make sure there's something that I didn't miss. But it's looking really good out here. And look how much detail that I'm getting in the dark nebula region of the Tadpole Nebula. That's amazing. All right, and then I shot O3, and here's my O3. It's super grainy, right? It's, uh, it's because I think the cloud started rolling into my scene, so I think I got a little bit of that. But I did get quite a bit in the center and also a lot of contrast in that dark nebula region right there. All right, and here is my, my stack combined. So this is HOO, but to me, this looks pretty good. Decide for yourself if this is the right telescope for you. Uh, for me, this is, this is wonderful, right? Okay, now the moment of truth. I'm going to process my data because this is unprocessed and we'll see what type of photo that we can get on the tadpole. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed my photo of the Tadpole Nebula. What do you guys think of the Ascar 103 so far? I'm gonna reserve my opinion until I shoot with all of the accessories. So remember, the next video we're going to be shooting is with the point eight times reducer, flattener, and also after that, we're gonna be shooting with the point six times reducer flattener. Then I'll do some final thoughts on that. So. Look forward to that, guys, and I guess I'll see you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>